All right, so using this clone stamp layer, we are able to kind of work with the transitions a little bit. Remember, you hold down Option to target an area. Oh, I'm not on clone stamp. Okay, there we go. Use Option to target an area. And then your target will travel with you. So you need to keep moving it if you want that variation. Let's see, where can I use this? And I'm using it at a low opacity, about 60%. I could even go lower, but then I, I might risk my cloud just becoming too soft all in all. I think if there's one um, misassumption we have about clouds is that they're softer than they are, or at least more uniform than they really are. There's actually a lot of variation depending on the cloud. But what I do know about clouds is they don't have a whole lot of hard outline edges, right? unless the lighting's really extreme. So these are the ones that give me pause, where they're really bright and really outlined. So I can use clone stamp to kind of soften them generally and to give them a little bit more uh, shadow, a little bit push them a little bit further away from the viewer. So they don't push themselves into the foreground quite so much. I don't want to lose that variety. Okay, so I've done quite a bit with clone stamp, but sometimes it can look spotty. Right? And the most important thing is to clean up your hard edges before you start using this. And now we're going to talk about some finishing techniques that are new because all of these tools have been we've used before. So for some of these finishing techniques, which will really help polish it off, I am going to merge all my cloud layers together. Because I don't know if yours is like mine, but you might have issues where you're erasing away and you're taking out a hard edge, but then you're just revealing another hard edge and it just gets really frustrating. You can even use Clone Step just to introduce new elements, right? And of course, to, to erase away and knock them back. Okay, so my next step now is instead of trying to search for each layer that I need to erase from, in order to soften that edge or to pull it out or to reveal my character a little bit more. And instead of relying on auto select layer, which can be really tricky when we have so much transparency going on, I am just going to merge all my cloud layers together. But if I want to be really cautious about it and not lose all of this separate layer work, I'm going to do it um, in the, the merging way where I hold down option. So it creates a new layer that's merged. But what I don't want it to merge is my creature and my sky. So I'm going to turn those off, the locked layers. I'm going to keep my, my copy of the base cloud layers turned off and locked. Right. So right now, my creature is simply made up of one, two, three, four layers because I merged some of my composites together. And I still have this this little bit to use if I want to. Okay. And just with those four layers, if I turn on my sky, that looks pretty close to a believable cloud for me. So what am I going to do? I am going to go to the top layer, it would be clone stamp that's visible. And I'm going to hold down option and then say layer merge visible. By holding down option, it will not lose me my other layers. Instead, it will put them all together onto one layer for me at the top. And I'm going to mark that as green. So this is my new usable layer. I turn on the sky behind that. Very good. I turn on my creature. And now all on one layer, I can do things like dodge, burn, erase, uh, soften. And so let's teach you the new, new tool right away. 
So it's pretty easy to kind of zoom in, move around and see, oh, that edge doesn't look believable. That's still too sharp. Maybe that edge too. So here's a little spot tool, which in some ways is just a pain, but really works well for this project. It's above the, the dodge and burn tool. And it's called the smudge tool. It looks like a little finger. I'm going to use it very similar to the way I use the eraser or dodge and burn, a large soft brush. And the strength I'm going to make less than 20 because it's pretty strong. But the difference is I just push in a direction and it will push the pixels around. And as it does it, it's like the wind blowing on the cloud. As it does it, it will soften them because it's having to create usually more pixels, right? So if the wind's blowing across, ooh, look like that, my cloud, I can show that with the smudge tool. So I just used it a lot and it went from that to that, just in that one area which makes it in detail look a lot more believable as a cloud texture. Now, if I use it too much internally, it's gonna soften everything too much. So I just wanna pull out the clouds, like the, the wind is just tugging at these edges and kind of separating them from their core. So it's especially where you have little lingering hard edges. And you will have some lingering hard edges. This tool is very helpful. Again, you want some variety. You don't want to use it everywhere the same. That's why I'm using a pretty small brush, but it's very soft. And I can just blow on it, like blowing on a candle. I can change the direction of the wind, and I can kind of swirl it and it will soften it for me. Remember, the computer is very good at softening edges. It is very bad at sharpening them. Now, I am affecting the pixels directly. So this is a direct adjustment tool, or a direct, just a tool. But I did it on a copy of everything else. So if I, if I ended up doing it too much, I still have my the layers that the things came from, right, underneath. So I can be pretty brave in how I use it, which is always a good way to work, being fearless. And remember that some clouds are in front of other clouds, so it's okay to have some perceived edges, just as long as they're not just two-dimensional soft edges. So this is the smudge tool to simulate wind. This is how you can get little contrails. Okay. All right, so as I'm using the smudge tool, I can kind of shape the profile a little bit with it. But if I find something that just doesn't really look believable, I can always just switch to the eraser and cut it away as well. In fact, because I've merged everything, I could be pretty bold and even just use a really large eraser and knock whole sections back a little bit like that if I want them to go further away because it just lets more of the sky come through. Now, the other thing I can do is I can dodge and burn. But just like all the steps so far, I want to make sure I've taken care of these weird hard edges before I start dodging and burning things. And since we have a tendency to overdo the dodge and burn, I want to do all the other stuff I can do first. So smudging is great if, if your edges ever look too regular. And honestly, my experience shows me that in critiquing these, you know, we just have one day to do them. 
the most common uh, advice I give is that we want to give more variety to your edges. And that's just something to aim for in all of your compositing. It was true on your landscapes, it's true on your creatures. And we're just slowly learning more and more tools that help us do that. But it has to do with the nature of the material. And so what's unique about this project is since we're all using cloud material, we're all kind of challenged by the same aspects of how clouds merge and move and how they're lit. Okay, so this is all on that beautiful merged layer. Right, by holding down option while you say merge visible. It's a great tool to be able to work on everything directly in a common sense way without having to use layer masks or clipping masks, but while still retaining all of the original pixels that, that gave you your result in case you need them back. And it's gonna knock this back a little bit, let some of that background show through. Clouds that are more at a distance will blend in more with their sky, and then clouds that are smaller and closer to the viewer will stand more apart. Okay, so last step, it's a good time to save, is to do a, an overlay of just dodge and burn. But we're going to do it so we don't actually dodge and burn the sky at the same time. So how can we do that? Well, it's the same old skills. We're gonna take that one combined layer. We're gonna select the empty space around it with contiguous turned off, right? Then we are going to make a new layer, say select inverse, and then fill that, edit fill with 50% gray. And it would be smart if we selected masked it first so it softens it. But basically when I dodge and burn, I wanna avoid the edges anyway. This is more for internal shapes, internal shadows. Okay, so now I'm going to say edit fill with 50% gray. And it undoes all my work, right? But because I use select and mask, you'll see that it has a soft, a softened edge. Now I'm going to change that from normal mode to overlay mode. And it's like it was never there. And just zooming in on that one area showed me where I can smudge a little. I can do it aggressively. Just pull this out. Let the computer catch up with me. Smudging does take quite a bit of processing. So it's another reason I don't use it till near the end. Okay, so now on this overlay layer, I can dodge and burn wherever I like, and it's only going to affect my cloud, not my sky behind. So I'm just gonna really overdo it so you can see, but I'll do it still lower than 20% and only on the midtones. So I can burn in the shadows on my creature, the shadows on the feet. Shadows around the eye separating the head from the shell, knocking that tail back. Okay, big difference, right? Then I can dodge, though my cloud's already pretty bright. I could really brighten it on top of the head, <laughs> top of the back, give it some variety. Top of the tail. Oh, I gotta be careful how quick I go and how small my brush is. Don't wanna leave little shooting stars as my computer tries to catch up. So that's my dodging and burning. And then this is what I recommend. Go to filter and go to blur and gouge and blur it, which will soften it a little bit and extend it and then play with your opacity. 
see if you really need it. And really, you probably only need a little bit of it.